Valentine's Day and chocolate go like hand in hand. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> So I wanted to like acknowledge the holiday. The original recipe I'll have linked down below and I adapted it by having the recipe and baking it in a smaller cake pan because like that's a lot of cake that they wanted to make. <laughs> we will start by melting some coconut oil and bittersweet chocolate together. I'm just gonna do it in the microwave, go slow, take your time. You don't want this to be piping hot. You don't want to scorch anything nuke it for like 30 seconds, stir it, 30 seconds, stir it, and then mine took another 20 seconds, and then really stirring it to melt that last little bit of chocolate. We can set that aside to cool a little bit. Now's a good time to take your eggs out of the fridge because we actually do need them to be room temperature. Cold eggs isn't going to really work with this recipe, so stick them in like a little container and pour some hot water on them, just like tap hot water, and let them get the fridge chill off of them for like five minutes while we work on the rest of the ingredients. Preheat our oven to 350 degrees. We should get our cake pan prepared. I'm gonna use an eight inch round cake pan, brush it with a little bit of oil, dust it with cocoa powder, put the parchment paper back in, brush a little bit of oil on it. You can set that aside in a small bowl, measure our sliced almonds with the skin on, some cocoa powder and salt then if you have a mini food processor put that mixture in there and roll it up until you don't have any whole almonds left we'll add some coconut and pulse it like three times just enough to break it up a little bit we can pour it back into our little bowl and set it aside we really want to make sure all our prep is done before we get going this cake you want to like mix it and get it in the oven it's not gonna work if it just like sits around. Once all of that is done, in a medium bowl, crack your three eggs into it, whisk it until the eggs get cohesive and become like one uniform liquid mass. We're going to add our white sugar and brown sugar and whisk this all together. You wanna to get as much air incorporated in there as you possibly can. You could use a stand mixer if you want, but I mean, it's not a lot of ingredients, so I believe that you can do it with like <laughs> your own power. And it's gonna expand in volume. You can see it sort of ribbons in on itself and becomes like luscious and thick. This is where my camera cut out. <laughs> I did not see it coming. <laughs> Add in your cool down chocolate and coconut oil, whisk it in there until everything looks chocolatey and you can't see any eggs anymore. Then we will dump in our almond cocoa powder coconut mixture, mix it in with the spatula just a little bit until it's all cohesive. We can pour it into our prepared cake pan, get it into our oven that is at 350 degrees and set a timer. Mine took 30 minutes to bake. Could have gone a little bit shorter probably but when a skewer was inserted in the middle, it came out with like crumbs on it, and so it's cooked. Once it's like done, we can put it on a wire rack to cool for about 20 minutes before we depan it. The original recipe says that you can coat this in ganache. Chocolate on chocolate just seems like... <laughs> A lot. <laughs> so I went the fresh berry approach. Some whipped cream or cocoa whip on this guy would probably be fantastic. This is pretty good. You get some texture from that coconut that we put in and it's like a just undercooked brownie in texture. Definitely a perfect Valentine's dessert or like a gluten-free birthday cake. I can't see anybody disliking this. Thank you so much for watching guys. Really appreciate it.